Welcome back to E3 2010, folks. We are live and about to do something very near and dear to our hearts. We will go into vats and shoot someone in the face. <laughs> it's one of the many fun things to do in Fallout New Vegas. Here it is, folks. We have a world premiere hands-on demo right now. And here to take us back into the wasteland is Project Director at Obsidian Entertainment, Josh Sawyer. Um, from what I see on screen, this ain't the same wasteland I remember from Fallout 3. We must be in Vegas, and Vegas is not what you would expect in the apocalypse. No, no. So, uh, Vegas is almost the exact opposite of DC in a lot of ways, just conceptually and also in our game. So, the capital wasteland is really run down in Fallout 3. In New Vegas, um, this area has actually been relatively untouched by the nuclear weapons. You can see they have power, the casinos are up and running, they're getting power from Hoover Dam. So this is kind of like a little isolated oasis in the middle of the wasteland. It's very uh, Fallout Vice City, if you will. I love the, <laughs> I, I love the, the neon, like it's, it's such a fresh look for the engine. It really shows off how beautiful this game can be. Yeah, we, we really wanted to make sure that the strip felt vibrant and had that sort of googie architecture and style of the late 50s and early 60s Vegas, which is classic Vegas and it also fits with the retro future style of the Fallout franchise. And I, I do want to point out, though, that it doesn't all take place on the Vegas Strip, that there is more traditional wastelandy stuff um, outside of Vegas proper. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of the game, actually, most of the game, I would say, takes place in what we call the Mojave Wasteland. So this is the Mojave Desert all around uh, New Vegas, going up and down uh, I-15 and Highway 95. And uh, it's mostly... We're going to look at it right here, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be looking at some pretty cool stuff. Um, it's, it's really about, the game is about uh, you trying to find out who tried to kill you and also uh, traveling through the desert and trying to get to Vegas and then dealing with a larger conflict in the area. Yeah, Josh, let's take a step back and, and refresh the story for those who didn't hear. Mm -hmm. Somebody did try to kill the character that we're controlling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened? You, you, you got left in a ditch? Somebody ambushed you at some point? Yeah, so the game literally starts with you being shot in the head twice and dropped in a shallow grave. So <laughs> You guys really know how to start a game, whether, yeah. it's, being, whether it's crowning and popping out of uh, the holiest of holies or being shot in the head and left in a ditch. Well, and, we, yeah. well I was going to say, and speaking of starting a game, this is a much quicker start than in Fallout 3. You're kind of out there, you know, yeah, we, fighting things. We, we knew a lot of the people that played this game and played Fallout 3, and the, the vault intro was pretty cool for Fallout 3, oh but we wanted to make sure that people could go right into the gameplay. Oh, and there you go, the gameplay. <laughs> All right, which brings us to weapons. Yes. Because you already had the basis of Fallout 3 as far as tech, you got to play with a lot of doodads. It tells you there's more weapons in the game, and they're modifiable. Yeah, so we have about twice as many weapons in New Vegas as we're in Fallout 3. And you can also add mods. So this is the light machine gun that we're looking at right here. You actually have the ability to add a, a larger drum on it, extends its ammo capacity. You have things that can increase the rate of fire, uh, do all sorts of different stuff, whether it's guns, explosives, or energy weapons. But I think you're cool. downplaying the amount of, uh, <laughs> of modifications that have been done here. Like, let's say I wanted grenades that, I don't know, were incendiary, caught on fire, and I wanted to, I don't know, shoot them out of a machine gun. That is a combo I can actually make happen in your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can take the grenade machine gun, you can uh, put the high-speed motor on it so it fires even faster, and then you can put high-explosive variant grenades in it. So, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with the weapon system. Yeah, what's what's the economy behind that? So, so you can't just do that willy-nilly and have these crazy powerful weapons. No, no, no. So, obviously, you start with your sort of basic weapons, and then you can buy mods at various stores uh, throughout the world. Uh, you also have the ability to craft, uh, handcraft ammo. You can make hand loads at reloading benches and stuff like that. So it's a combination of buying from stores and also crafting within the game. Now, Josh, uh, one of the uh, huge aspects of Fallout is, of course, uh, dealing with companions. And you guys have sort of streamlined that operation with the companion wheel. Yep. So the companion wheel is a way that we allow the player to very quickly uh, deal with the, uh, the companions. You can see it right here. So in Fallout 3, you had to do it through conversation. It was a little slow. So this allows you quick access to all the main things that you control on your character. So it's nice and streamlined, but we still have really rich dialogues with the companions, and each of them has their own sort of quest line that you can go on. So we really feel people get a lot of value out of them. Um, some people have asked me, and I just tell them they're idiots, but they're like, hold on, but is this just like an add-on or something? This is a full-fledged fallout size game. Oh, no, no, yeah, the Mojave Wasteland is about the same size as the Capital Wasteland. You're not going to be walking around here for two hours or anything. And as, as a value add for people who thought, <laughs> oh, that Fallout 3 was too easy, you have Hardcore Mode, if you wouldn't mind explaining. Yes, so Hardcore Mode is it's something you can activate at the beginning of the game. You can turn it off if it's too tough. If you play through the whole game with it, you get an achievement or a trophy. But it, it adds healing over time. Uh, n skin packs don't heal instantly. You have to deal with dehydration, starvation, sleep deprivation in the desert. There's all sorts of little changes that make it a little more immersive and just sort of harder for the player. And weight on ammo. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Weighty ammo, exactly. that makes a big difference. 
All right, so... Uh, when can we yes. actually get hardcore with this game? Uh, it's going to be out on October 19th of this year. Love it. All right, really Josh, can't wait. Thank you so much. Follow thank you, guys. Follow Vegas, everybody. Fun. Thanks. Thanks for coming oh. by and then stealing another 60 hours of our lives. Yeah. yeah. Really exactly. appreciate it. All right, Olivia.